Welcome to the Bravery Academy. My name is Emma Ferris, and I'm thrilled to have you here as we look at how do you deal with stress and resilience through your life. This is not my first podcast, but I'm very excited about this one because it feels like it's been gestating for months and months and months. But the truth is, I didn't know if I was brave enough. My mom met a serial perpetrator, a psychopath named John Meehan. He was recently just fresh out of jail. People experience an increase in anxiety on a Sunday night. There are some things to navigate Sunday scaries. Our self-talk can dictate our lives, whether it's positive or negative. We're going to have some amazing guests over the next few weeks, months, and possibly years as this podcast evolves. They all have the unique reason why they're coming onto this podcast to share, whether it's a science, the research, the aha moments through life. What I want this podcast to be is a moment to shift your awareness. Not every episode will be the one that you go, that was the one for me. But I promise you, the guests that I have got coming on here have some absolute pearls of wisdom. My first podcast is called Conning the Con, and you may have listened to it. It may be the reason why you're here. In 2020, I shared the con man story that brought me to this moment today. And the podcast, Con in the Con, was a therapy, a moment of self-discovery, and a moment of release. And I'm so proud of what we created. And I say we, it's not a royal we, it's actually we, because my sister Sarah, who is now on this journey of the Bravery Academy, was on that journey with me. She was the producer and editor. And now she's behind the scenes making this next part of my journey a reality and hopefully something that is going to spark a little seed that will germinate for you in the future. My background's quite untraditional, I guess, to be where I am today. I started out my career as a physiotherapist and it has been such an amazing way to learn to listen to people's bodies and in 2019, when I went through my moment of chaos, which the Con the Con podcast is all about, was that was because I wasn't listening in. I realized that many people in our society are like that, and that is a very normal way of being. However, because we're so head-driven, it is stopping many of the moments of connection for us, many of these moments of learning to listen into what our body needs and to have compassion for ourselves and others. But this is not is it's not a substitute for professional help or medical or mental health services. It's a place to be empowered, be curious, and hopefully be a catalyst for the way you deal with the tough stuff in life. I have also walked the walk. I have put the tools into place. And I want you to see that you can develop your invisible toolbox of stress and resilience tools, that is. I'm also going to share with you this process around shifting out of that survival state, how you get into this recovery mode and eventually into a thriving state. And why that's not as simple as, you know, going on a holiday or quitting a job and expecting the life to sort itself out. What I've learned from my own experiences is that it's unique to you, your experience, your story, your upbringing, your social environment that will all influence the way that you are going to respond. But that is the one thing that we all have control over. And that's bravery. Choosing to shift the way that you control that. So my goal is that Everybody that listens to this podcast will take just one little pearl of wisdom away. If that's all you get, that's enough. For me, this is around my passion in life. I've come from the scientific background of physio and body connection and fix, fix, fix. But actually what I've really taken away from these last probably 10 years particularly is it's about listen, 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 not fix, fix, fix. I've alluded to this conning the con story where I figured out that the guy that I'd been dating, he had been working and working to groom me and actually a few other people that were in my town as well. So I wasn't the only person that was hurt along this way or impacted along the way. However, at that time, I was the only person that he was dating, I think. Who knows? Um, But the main person that he was conning It took me a lot to learn to figure out what it was to recover from that moment. And it's the reason why, again, the Bravery Academy has been created now. 
because I have some lessons that have been fundamental to be where I am four years later after that experience of shock trauma and life trauma compared to just a a kind of day-to-day stress or a chronic stress or illness. This was a, a deeply different experience. As I've learned from the research, as you'll hear in the future podcast episodes, particularly with one of our amazing guests, Dr. Debbie Silber, around betrayal and trust, that learning to recover and heal is a choice. And I chose that on the day that I found out who he was. I didn't really realize how deeply I chose it, but it all came down to a lot of the science and research that I'd I'd read actually a few years before that, because this was the work that I was doing. I was working as a stress and resilience coach for businesses, coaching people. I was running women's retreats. I still do all that now. It's just at this next level of knowing. But what I learned from this this moment in time, that 2019, April the 9th, if I'm going to be exact, when my world fell apart, I realized I can change the narrative, the narrative in my head, which would then shift the narrative in my body. And so I chose that day to learn to fight. And that was brave because I didn't know what fighting could look like. I didn't know that I had it within me. And I know that this episode is probably going to be quite emotional because sometimes I forget the power of fighting and how amazing it can be. So I sit here and you can hopefully hear these little moments of tears in the voice because this means something to me. Showing up, telling my story, removing the shame, being vulnerable. This hopefully is going to allow people to see that we can shift it ourselves. So I'm going to take a breath because that's quite an important part. When I found out who the con man was, and I I had these gut feelings along that journey for the five half months that I'd known him before that, and it overrode that sensation. My thinking brain took over and it was very much part of the sunken cost fallacy. It was like, oh, well, I've gone this far down the rabbit hole now. And it kept evolving and it kept evolving. And I realized, looking at the big picture for myself, that I went from a space of listening to my head, definitely not my heart, because my goodness, if my heart was really in it, she wouldn't have picked him. And I didn't listen to my gut. My life went upside down. I went into a shock response. And had to figure out how to unfreeze and how to fight. Now, you can definitely listen to the full episodes, but without too much of a spoiler alert, for the next two and a half months, I had to figure out how to put one foot in front of the other. One of the clear mantras that came up for me at that time was that you just have to get through to lunchtime. You just have to get through to the afternoon. You just have to get through to the evening. And when you do that, you'll see how far you've come. Because every every few hours, things would shift. It was a moving target that I was unaware of how I was going to control it. So at that time, after I found out who he was, I had to work with the police. Well, didn't have to. I chose to work with the police to help stop what he was doing. There was a real clear moral line that he had crossed and that I wasn't okay with that he was going to keep doing this to other people, especially as the web of lies kept coming up. And I don't even know in some ways where this came from because it was so deeply embedded in me, this feeling of injustice as well as pain, but it wasn't revenge. And I want that to be clear because I remember having a conversation with the comments father around this when I started to put the first podcast out. This is not revenge. When women step up to find a voice, this is empowerment and this is protection. And I can say that four years later now, I can say three years after the podcast coming out, that it's really hard to find your voice sometimes. It wasn't just that he'd changed his name. I'll just set the scene. He had stolen some money. He'd worked his way into my life, into my family. I had young young children at that stage, post-divorce. And he had met my siblings, my parents. And there was so much more to this level of betrayal than I had ever expected. I, I grew up in a very kind, loving family, which had, you know, good morals. And, and we be- I believed that people were good. Shocker, some aren't. <laughs> and I remember thinking, 
who are these humans that are out there? And as I've had these conversations post that experience, understanding this, this comment and, and learning about psychopathy and narcissists and all these different amazing psychological terms, I've realized that, you know, there's, there's this low level psychopathy happening every day and mind games and manipulation and gaslighting. And it's really hard to figure out what's right until you learn to listen in and to kind of actually choose you. And so over those two and a half months when I found out who he was and then I, I had to figure out how to get as much money back. I had to figure out how I survived. I was running on survival mode. I was running on fumes. I started to run my business. I had my two young kids. And there was a moment in that day over those few months. And again, the emotions come up and I think about them as a mother and any mother that's, or any parent that can resonate with this is you so deeply want to put a Superman cape around them over your body and just protect them. And when I didn't do that because I let someone into my life that betrayed me at that level, my fundamental level of safety was shifted. And that was one of the reasons why my body went into hijack mode. And it shifted my understanding of relationships at such a, a pivotal level that I, I still have to work at this now. I still have to come back and tune into it. But my mother mode was so intense. And I was like, nobody does this to me. Like I can feel this passion so deeply in me. And I figured out what fighting looked like. And it is exhausting, but it's also essential. And I wish I'd known how to physically fight in my youth. I didn't do a martial art and actually at 36 or 37, I think it was when this all happened, I decided to learn a martial art to figure out how does my body release this impact? And it was two and a half months into this journey, working with the police, having to deal with a con man via messages and manipulation and gaslighting that my world finally changed in a moment. It was a Thursday in June that year. and I realized I had this like moment of like oh my god I think he could be coming back into New Zealand because he'd fled to Australia so I'm not giving you the full story you gotta listen to the podcast to get the full story oh my god what if he was coming back into New Zealand like what if what would that mean and I remember sitting in my old home and I got this message from the policeman that I've been dealing with the detective and it was the fact that the con man Andrew Tonks, Andrew Tonks Thompson, Andrew John Lowry. These are all the names that he's gone by in um, his aliases, as I found out months later. I mean, there's so many. I found out that he, he was traveling on a plane. Meanwhile, I knew there was an arrest warrant waiting for him at the border. I got the message later that day that he had been arrested in Christchurch, coming off an international flight from Australia. It was that moment that I realized recovery started. Well, actually, I probably realized that after the fact, but it felt like it was the moment that I could breathe. And I broke to the ground that day. I I screamed and cried and laughed like a crazy hyena, (laughs) which, and, and, and I couldn't really tell many people that this had happened because for those two and a half months, I was having to keep this a secret to get through to protect myself and my family. But recovery started that day and it's still going. It's still going. And in the work that I do now, I talk about the shift from survival to recovery to thriving. But to actually honor this recovery mode is just really powerful. And recovery is something that is a choice. That is one of the biggest lessons that came out of this. And it can't be from just a, I'm going to white knuckle through it. I'm going to just deal with it from a physical load. And many of us do, right? We go through trauma and we'll find a way to numb out. We'll find a way to exercise through, to give me a hormone hit, like a happy hormone hit, like a dopamine by feeling something, whether it's having sex, whether it's having food, whether it's over-socializing or overworking, we'll find a way to not feel. And I did a few of those things in regards to that, but I had to figure out what my way of self-regulation was going to be for me. And it all started with awareness. The awareness that I have these buckets that had just become full. It's like you've got to figure out how do you deal with each of your stress buckets, your physical stress, 
your emotional stress, and your psychological stress. And all three were overflowing, filled to the brim, and leaking out the sides. And so I went, okay, let's open this stress and resilience toolbox. You have a few things in there. Which one do you need right now? Which one's going to move you forward? And every day, something different was needed. Some different tool. Yes, I use the breathing tools, and it's not a one-size-fits-all with this. At that time in my life, when you've been through trauma and just like, you know, on the floor running on empty, when you go into that survival response, it's a body reaction first and foremost, and that can keep us stuck there, making it really hard to shift it until we figure out, do I need to release the muscles, do I need to release the mind or the emotions to bring me into safety mode? And while I had, you know, a very safe upbringing, there were some things that I didn't know how to do. And emotional regulation was a really big part of that. So I had to learn that very big fast track. And that sometimes those emotions can feel so overwhelming and scary that it can feel like if we even notice them, it's going to be too painful, like just too painful, often more painful than physical pain to experience it. So I I kind of went on this massive journey at the same time as going through a court process with the con man as he didn't plead guilty for several, several months. And so recovery was really unique for me. And this is what I want people to see is that your lived experience is unique, as unique as your genetics, your body, your upbringing, your recovery, whatever that looks like is unique. There isn't a one size fits all model. It's just a matter of learning to create awareness, self-regulation, and figure out what do you need to bring yourself forward and to learn to recover. So when I shared the Con the Kong podcast, I think what it helped people understand was some people that may have had that experience, maybe not that extreme, but that they're not alone. And by doing that, we remove some of the shame, some of the, the fear, and some of the anxiety around going through those experiences. Because these are human experiences. It's the, the lows in life that we need to get resilient for. It's not the high of the roller coaster. It's that moment when we kind of bottom out. And then it's how we come back up the roller coaster or come back up the hill. And when you climb that hill and you look back and you go, look how far I've actually come. Wow. You realize this is not an easy process, this life. But there are things that we can and that we can't control. So as I sit in my office in front of my computer talking to myself for around 40 minutes now, I realized that I'd been putting off doing this episode because part of me was this little part in my mind that was a protector going, who are you to speak up right now? Who do you think you are getting up here and doing this? It had stopped me from being brave enough for a wee while now to do this. It had all the excuses. You haven't got enough money in the bank. Look at you. You're still rushing around. Who's going to listen to this? This, uh, You know, all those stories that come into your head. And so I sat down with this part of me a wee while ago. I remember sitting uh, down by the lake and going, all right, let's have this out. Let's talk about it. Why are you blocking me? And it's a normal human reaction to want to be accepted and safe and loved. And I'm like, I get that. I get that we all want to play safe. But if I don't speak up and bravely having conversations around those tough moments in life, I'm not living my truth. So that's what we're about at the Bravery Academy. I'm really glad that you're here in whatever capacity that is. You might dive into some of the episodes with a psychologist that's going to be joining us, Dr. Victoria Thompson, throughout the season. You might be here just for some of the ones on exercise, nutrition, or you might be here for the amazing stories of recovery and survival. And we have some phenomenal headliners in this season, people that have survived school shootings, that have survived trauma that you wouldn't believe. We have some brave humans coming forward to speak, and I'm really excited. I'm grateful that they are stepping up to do that, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you as you share the Bravery Academy podcast. I'd love you to message me and tell me what you thought. Please be kind because I'm being brave enough doing this. If you got to this point, that would be appreciated. 
And there are lots of ways that you can connect with me, www.thebreatheffect.com. I'll put links in the show notes. And there's some really amazing resources, blogs, free 15-minute stress-relieving videos and audios in there. So wherever you are on your journey, I, I know it's not easy and that's okay. Nobody's got their crap together. I'll put that out there right now. And if they are, I'd like to have a conversation with them about how they got there. <laughs> Please be a guest. For now, I want to thank you. Please go spread the word around the Bravery Academy. And remember just today that a little bit of stress is a little bit brain stretching, but too much means you've got to learn to find some calm. <laughs>